if consciousness ultimately is about information, uh, you know, a computer might have a, an, an integrated information system as the human brain does. Well, I mean, it could be, and, and, and that would lead, I think, to a conflict in intuitions. It could be that your research could isolate an area in the brain that is associated with consciousness, that is active. I, you know, I'm yeah. speculating. And then if we found animals that don't have that area of the brain, we would have some, you know, we, we would have some reason to say they don't have consciousness. But, but that would really conflict with the intuitions associated with a robot, mm -hmm. who certainly doesn't have those areas of the brain and can fool us into the, can fool us, can lead us mm -hmm. into, can generate the same intuitions that it has consciousness. So I don't, I don't really see an, a way out of this. I, I, but the problem with the robot, I think, as an analogy, is that it, it, it isn't typically the case that most of the intuitions about consciousness just come from observing other people. They come from this introspective uh, mm -hmm. aspect of examining natural language and, and having subjective, or, or, or at least taking the attitude that we have subjective experience and then acting accordingly and sharing it, as you would say. So, uh, it, But you could surely program a robot to to do all of the above. I mean, there is no... no you, you, you could, but if, if you now, knew it was a robot, mm -hmm. then that might be the only reason why you wouldn't attribute consciousness to it, and it wouldn't be a bad reason today, unless we had a mechanistic account of what consciousness mm -hmm. arose from, and we had instantiated that in the robot. So, so, Danny, how about we take your neurons and replace them one at a time by... Uh, <laughs> by <laughs> which are functionally isomorphic to the original uh, neurons, and yeah, replace I mean, half I, your brain, and, and we'll ask you. You know, I... Berkeley, you know, John, we speculated a lot about whether, you know, it has to be made of meat. And, uh, and I don't see any reason why it would have to be made of meat. Mm -hmm. So uh, if, if you found silicon substitutes, I, I see no reason to, and, and the functioning would remain the same and the emotional but expressions would remain the same? That transfers the problem sort of the way David is yeah. talking about it because, it, it, as yeah. you say, it could be information or it could be some other aspect of complex matter that the brain is an, is an example of sharing that mm -hmm. property that's essential. And once we understand that, certain things will become transparent about how this kind of thing happens. I do, I do think it's more likely to be the information than something than the biology, for example. Right, like, like, like plasma of, physics, yeah. like something about condensed matter or some kind of like you know, thing that happens with certain kinds of things. Mm -hmm. if, it had, if, it, if it is the information, then that doesn't fit with our intuitions, which are driven primarily by emotions. Mm -hmm. So our attributions of consciousness are driven by emotions. When we think about consciousness, we think about information processing. And there is really a deep disconnect between those two.